And turning now to the U.S. city of Jackson, Mississippi, where residents have been without running water for most of the past week. After flooding hit a treatment plant, thousands lost access to clean water and they had to rely on the bottle stuff. There is now some relief as water pressure has been restored and public schools have been reopened. To provide an update on the situation, Jackson Mayor Chokwe Antalumumba joins Michelle Martin. Thanks, Christian. Mayor Chukwe, Anta Lumumba, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you're the mayor of the state's capital, uh, largest city. As we understand it, last week, most residents, including yourself, had no running water, certainly not enough to drink, wash their clothes, uh, take care of the necessities of life. What's the situation as we're speaking now? Well, fortunately, we have more positive news to report. Uh, pressure has been restored to our residents, uh, with the exception of a few outlying cases that, that may have challenges at individual properties that are specific to that property. Uh, the next stage in the process would be for the health department to give the go-ahead for testing to resume. Uh, there are approximately 120 sites across the city uh, that samples are pulled from. Uh, and if we can get all 120 samples to come back clear for two consecutive days, then the boil water notice will be lifted. Uh, but I do want to say this, that we have been here before. Uh, we've been here two Februarys ago. Uh, we've had this challenge and we've restored pressure before. Uh, we've been able to lift the boil water notices, uh, but that in no regards means that it is mission accomplished. Until we have significant funding uh, to deal with the challenges for the, the three decades long of, of neglect and, and lack of investment in our water treatment facility, uh, it's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when these systems will fail again. And so for me, uh, this is kind of the more dangerous time frame, uh, the time frame where everyone, you know, is kind of in a sense of, of comfort and, and, you know, maybe even in a sense of complacency. Uh, that, that it troubles me the most because I know uh, just how threatened my residents are on an ongoing basis. So you're saying attention spans around the country are short on an issue like this, but this, this problem has such a long tail that you want that part of it to be understood, that this isn't kind of a, just a momentary crisis. This is a longstanding, I don't know, what would you call it? Tragedy, travesty, what, what, what would you describe that you sort of think about the long tail of this problem? Well, I think it is a tragedy. I think it's a tragedy that we all have our hands in and, and you, know, uh, you know, aren't truly revealing the best of, of what governance should look like. You know, my view is that when we have these things take place, it is, it is humiliating to communities. And so I call this a cycle of humiliation. And I think that the true uh, scale by which we, we should grade our success and failure as cities, as states, uh, as a nation, is through the sustainable development goals we reach, uh, through our ability to provide communities dignity. Uh, and so our effort is to reveal a dignity economy, one uh, that, that reflects the inherent dignity that every person should have. Uh, you know, you don't see that when you go to, you know, bathe and you don't have sufficient water. You don't see that when you're trying to cook and you're concerned with uh, the quality of your water. Uh, you don't see that when men, women, and children uh, are elderly, are suffering in one way or another, one facet or another uh, under this challenge. So you've been mayor since 2017. Did, how much time would you say of yours as mayor has been preoccupied with providing basic services like water? Well, we have lifted up in one form or another uh, since we came in office this challenge, this need for uh, a continuous line of funding uh, in order to address, you know, the decay and, and you know, the need for weatherization at our water treatment facility and, and other infrastructure yeah. needs. Uh, sometimes it, it uh, was manifest in, in terms of uh, asking for uh, an extension in our 1% our sales tax, which was passed under my father's administration which the residents uh, passed by more than 90% in order to tax themselves to go towards these ongoing infrastructure woes. Uh, you know, what our residents have proven is that they're willing to make the sacrifice in order to see Jackson progress. We have to demonstrate that we're willing to meet them and, and willing to, to sacrifice uh, as well. And that shared sacrifice can lead to these changes. 
an ability to extend uh, the sunset on that 1% sales tax was viewed early on as an opportunity to leverage those funds going forward for the critical repairs that are necessary now in our infrastructure. Uh, we've done it through direct legislative requests specific to our water treatment facility. Uh, we are under an agreed order of consent from the EPA, which is a detailed document, right, which outlines all of the challenges, the significant challenges that our water treatment facility. We have presented that to the legislature. We have presented the need for, uh, for funding in, in various forms. Um, and the most we've ever received is about $3 million uh, towards JH Fuel, which is uh, the older of our two water treatment facilities, but actually the more reliable of the two. Uh, and JH Fuel serves downtown. Uh, and so in essence, you know, we've decided to, to uh, support or the legislature decided to support uh, the funding to the water service that, that serves them and not the majority of our residents. So here's what I hear you saying. What I hear you saying is that your capacity as a city to fund these projects yourselves is limited. What I hear you saying is that the state legislature, which is dominated by Republicans, uh, you're a Democrat and it's also majority white and your city is majority black. And what I hear you saying is that you're willing to take the steps as a city to take care of these problems yourselves, but it's beyond your financial capacity to do so. And that the state legislature, the state government more broadly, has not been willing to give you the resources that you need to take care of this problem. Is that it? Is that the sub? Is that it in essence? Well, I think you you surmise it well, uh, and our record is is clear on that. Uh, and and I think that we can't mistake, uh, you know, an effort to come in and take over the system as an effort to to uh, support it. it is that what the states are offering to do now? Is the state offering to threatening to? I'm not sure which verb you want to use to take over the. Uh, governance of the water system is that is that what's in play at the moment? Well, I'll I'll say that that I've been you know calling that playbook out for a while now, uh, and I'll say that the governor, as recently as yesterday, said that 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 is an option that is still on the table. Right? Is that? But let me just ask you about that. I mean, you spoke about this whole situation being humiliating earlier. Not just it is obviously a matter of basic health and well being, having access to clean reliable water is just a basic issue of health and well-being. But you also talked about how it's humiliating to have to queue up to get bottled water in your home. It's not not being able to brush your teeth with the water that comes out of the tap in the capital city of a state in the United States of America in the 21st century. But if, if the state's willing to take on that responsibility, if you argue that, you know, the state, in fact, bears responsibility here by denying appropriate resources to fix this problem all along, what would be so wrong with that? Well, well first and foremost, I'm, I'm not absolving the state of any responsibility. The, the state has an obligation to the residents of Jackson because they are Mississippians like everyone else. I don't want you to get me, me uh, wrong in that regard. What I am saying is that an effort uh, to take over the revenue ultimately Right. Uh, and, and often siphon off that revenue that should go to repairs that Jackson residents need uh, will lead them into a, a deeper cycle of humiliation and, and take them from one state of misery to the next. Right. Uh, and so I think that there should be consistent funding uh, to help support. In fact, what we're asking for is often more of our own tax revenue uh, in order to go towards these these challenges. And so, you know, where I am making the clarification is, is that there can be uh, dedicated resources to help support the system versus a decision to take over the system that is more geared towards how you profit off of it than how you support it. And I think we have to know that there's extensive history and extensive literature uh, on the threats of privatization on poor communities, uh, communities that, that the, uh, the, the affordability of our water treatment uh, or our water billing uh, is already a, a major concern for our residents. And when corporations get involved like that, when uh, the residents don't have the determination or the ability to decide who leads them and, and who makes decisions over, you know, what the cost of, of certain services are, then it could potentially serve to harm them worse uh, where, where they can't, you know, afford the water that they, they so justly deserve. Mr. Mayor, let me just clarify this. I think many people are aware that there is an infrastructure bill that was passed uh, by the Congress, signed by President Biden earlier, 
Um, under the bill, it's my understanding the state of Mississippi received $75 million to upgrade drinking water systems across the state. An additional $429 million is to become available over the next five years. So have you received any of that money? Has any of that money been allocated? I have spoken directly to the president and he, uh, upon the passage of that, talked about what his hopes were for Jackson to receive out of that. That I've talked to the uh, administrator of the EPA and he talked about where their intent was for Jackson to receive uh, its fair share of that. And I've talked to uh, Mitch Landrew, the czar over the infrastructure bill itself, who has talked about uh, what his desires were for Jackson within the federal funding. Uh, so what we're talking about is money that was intended for Jackson that is yet to reach our hands. Uh, so, you know, there have been things that have said that, that they have said, well, we we don't have a plan from Jackson. Well, one, that that's not uh, accurate. We've, we've given different legislative requests and told them what we wanted to commit it to. Uh, we have presented uh, the EPA's uh, list of priorities, which is an exhaustive document that highlights the critical needs of the water uh, treatment facility. Uh, and, and lastly, the, they, the state created a portal uh, which requires that through the ARPA funding that all cities uh, make their request through the portal. That portal only opened up earlier uh, this, this month, which was merely a few days ago. Uh, now, when we talk about the challenges or our concerns, Jackson, Mississippi is the only city in the state that through that legislation that required that we use this portal to make our request that has a duplicitous process. Not only do we have to request funds through the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality, uh, we then, as the only city in the state, have to make an application through DFA, the Department of Finance and Administration, uh, which certainly doesn't know anything about water treatment or you know, the, the validity of the process or the projects. Uh, and so, you know, we have to ask questions. Why, why outline a separate and distinct process for Jackson, uh, which has not been guilty, at least under this administration, of any misappropriation of funds, uh, of not putting things towards the, the, the uh, absolute uh, necessary uh, projects that we have to take on. Well, so what's the answer? You've asked the question. Why is there a special process for Jackson? What's the answer? Uh, well, I, I think that, that Jackson is treated unfairly. Uh, I think that, that it is political. Uh, and I think that when we're talking about water uh, to people, to businesses, uh, this isn't the time for politics. And, and you know, as I said, uh, it's not a Democrat or Republican thing. Uh, this is a human thing. You know, I have to ask, you know, I, I, Mayor, I can't help but notice you've avoided using some of the terms that some of the outside uh, analysts looking at this have used, like systemic racism. I mean, that's a word that I have not heard you say. Those are words that I have not heard you say. Um, and I can see why. I mean, you still have to work with the the governor and the state legislature who have control of your financing uh, opportunities, who have to intercede with the federal government on your behalf. I know you talked to President Biden, or rather President Biden called you to check in on you know the situation there, but this is not just this is obviously a a health crisis and a but it's also a political crisis. What do you do in this situation where clearly there are people who are going to want to hear you say this is racism, this is just racism, hmm. and I'm just I'm just interested in how you're thinking about that. Yeah, well, well, I don't know that the moment requires for me to state the obvious, right? Uh, and and you know in this moment uh, I have to be centered on on what collaboration can take place to ensure the best condition for my residents. And so that's where I have to principally be aligned at this moment. Uh, but but there is an extensive record of what I have said and, and what I have lifted up regarding this challenge. Uh, and so my residents know who I am. Uh, they know uh, that, that I am not bashful about stating uh, those facts and, and being clear there. And so uh, it would only take, you know, just a short review of, of articles and, and uh, you know, certain interviews to, to know uh, that, that I, I have not been shy about saying what needed to be said in that moment. And, and so in the moment where we weren't receiving support, in a moment where, you know, repeated requests from our legislature were being denied, in a moment where, uh, you know, instead of listening to our infrastructure requests, uh, one state leader said, look, let's talk about you giving up your airport and we can talk about the rest. Uh, 
you know, I, I stated what that was. I, I talked about uh, the nature of what Jackson residents were facing. In this moment, when I have them at the table, uh, then it doesn't serve me, nor does it more importantly serve the residents of Jackson uh, for me to be, you know, uh, focusing on what they haven't been and, and, you know, what my issues with them are. Uh, I want to encourage them to remain. I want them to, to realize that the Jackson residents are worthy of uh, dependable, sustainable and equitable water treatment. So before we let you go, Mayor, um, just uh, two more questions. When when do you see full water service being restored to Jackson? Water that people can actually drink, use and bathe in? Mm -hmm. Well, well, you know, uh, based on the reports that I'm getting uh, and and we're optimistic, you know, while I can't say with all certainty, uh, we do believe, however, that it will be this week. Uh, we believe that by Wednesday of this week, uh, we could potentially see the water, uh, not only the pressure having been restored, but the boil water notice being lifted. That is our optimistic timeline, uh, but there are other factors that could come into play that could delay that. And so we, we have to, uh, you know, reserve making that declaration. The water crisis in Flint, Michigan, which spawned criminal investigations, public officials' resignations. There was a class action settlement of more than $600 million. What does accountability look like here? Well, I think accountability uh, in its simplest form is, is making sure that we can all look ourselves in the mirror and say that, that we have done everything that we could to improve Jackson's water treatment uh, distribution system. Uh, from from me on up uh, to the president. Uh, and when I say the water distribution system, I'm not only talking about the water treatment facility and, and all of its um, necessary and critical repairs. I'm talking about from that water treatment facility to the point of use. The city of Jackson, uh, unfortunately, uh, will become, you know, a part of a longer and, and more frequent narrative of communities that are underinvested in, uh, that have critical infrastructure needs that need to be addressed. Uh, at the same time, we, we have a wastewater system, we have a stormwater system, uh, we have roads and bridge infrastructure that needs to be addressed. And, and that, is, uh, that is part and parcel of what we're seeing across the country. Mayor Lumumba, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you. 